Okay. Th there goes the losing streak. Uh, we're going to talk about it with our guy, Carter Elliott of Spartans Illustrated of Sleepers Media. <laughs> wow, a lot of layers to that one. Let's go. You are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked on Spartans is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers, join today and you'll get $150 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on to get started. Spartan friends, Spartan family, Locked on Spartans listeners, thank you all so much for tuning in to a victory episode here of Locked on Spartans. Good God, it has been way too long since we've said that. And uh, no, luckily it's not going to be just me rambling on and on and on. We got the man, the myth, the legend, Carter Elliott of Spartans Illustrated, of Sleepers Media, just doing fantastic work wherever this man walks. Carter, hey, man, how you doing? Are we doing okay over there? Are we doing you know, okay? You know, I, I'm not sure who said it, but it just feels good to win one. It does. It does because I'm a I'm a man. I, I, I could take a lot. I consider myself to have tough skin. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't have been able to take – a third straight home loss as nine and a half point favorites. That's my break. That's, that's the, the straw that breaks the camel's back. That would have been it for me. So somehow finding a way tonight will keep me alive for a little bit longer. <laughs> I was thinking maybe gardening is what I take up instead of sports fandom, uh, maybe knitting crocheting. Uh, it, Cause look, things were looking dire. That was a nasty game. We'll get into it. Like in segment two, have like a real discussion of, how much better could this make us feel in the long run? But, hey, Carter, right now as we're talking about an hour and a half after the game, instant reaction to that one because mine is just one word. It's relief. But for you, what is your instant reaction to that win? Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I know that's two words, but, like, literally just thank God. Like, I, I understand we're going to get deeper into it, but at the end of the day, you can be as sad about the game. You can be sad about the play. But the one thing that me and you and everyone I think should hang their hat on is the fact that we just we found we found a way to win this game. Like you, you have to win this, or else Selection Sunday was going to be filled with cold sweats and nervousness and quiet rooms with people who are watching it with you. Like, are we okay? Which is no. not something we've experienced. So <laughs> it's just like. I guess you found a way and you won the basketball game. And at the end of the day, it's a W. That's all that matters broadly. It's weird. It's stupid. But if this win happens a month ago, I think I'm having a lot different reaction. But dang it, Carter, in March, every win is a win that is worth celebrating. Tom Izzo said it himself right after the game with Andy Katz of Big Ten Network. He said, look, I don't, I don't care how bad we played. We're going to celebrate this one. And, yes, that's just like the instant – emotion after the game especially on a super emotionally charged night on senior night but wow man they, they had to get off the schneid anyway possible yes could they have won by a lot more should they have won by a lot more absolutely but a, a, a win is a win especially in the month of march let's keep it positive here because we've had our handful of some negative shows here recently especially talking about basketball because there were some key performers in this game carter if you had to anoint one player as the mvp who are you giving this highly sought after trophy to? I mean, since I got the long sleeve on right now, yeah. I think it's only I think it's only right. It's 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 Trey Holloman. It's yeah. Trey Holloman. It, yeah. I think he I think he had some great moments in this game on both ends of the floor. Defensively, we know he's a guy who gets up in people. And look, um, you know, there was a lot of discussions about Trey Holloman and where he's gonna kind of go into the rotation coming yeah. into this year with all the guard play and everything that was going on. And I feel confident in saying that Trey Holloman is the most improved player on this basketball team right now. Totally. Like we, we look through the roster and like guys have maybe not gotten as much better as we thought, or they've kind of maybe been a little bit more stagnant. Trey Holloman has kind of kicked that narrative. And I think that he did a great job. He accepted the challenge and he got better this season. Like you can't, I, I feel like you can't go against that, whether you feel a certain way about him or not, you got to call a spade a spade. And like he, He's improved drastically this year uh, to the point where, like, you look at what he can be a piece for this team moving forward. And we needed him tonight. Like, <laughs> we needed yes. – my, my, my basketball team needed Trey Holloman to be 
a Northwestern team down three starters tonight. Yes. And, and, and it felt good. I don't care. It felt good. Can't take it from me. Trey's first double-digit game in scoring in 11 games. Uh, not too long ago, I said, hey, he hit a sophomore wall. And, well, there he is just throwing a egg all over my face right there. And please do. God, I love to be wrong sometimes, man. And that is a delightful, delightful scene to see him throw up 12 points. You mentioned that he's the most improved player. The only guy that could possibly give him competition for that this year is Malik Hall. He's probably, mm -hmm. if not the MVP, the 1B MVP or one of the best two players on the court tonight, point blank period. Career high, 17 rebounds, 15 points. And, of course, this happens, well, a month or two after he had the zero burger against Northwestern. And he, he was aware of that after the game when he talked with Andy Katz that, yeah, he did have a really, 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 rough go at it in Evanston and he had this game circled and he is one of the two big reasons you won this game so Malik Hall I know you're listening I know you never miss an episode of Lockdown Spartans thank you for your service but yeah again I don't know if it's Malik improved this year or quite simply put if he just got healthy for an entire season like wow whoever thought that would be the case for his final year at MSU but very thankful it is because he showed out today when the team needed him most because it look if it wasn't Malik Call scored in the low block, Carter, who whomst was. I I I don't think it would have been anybody. And you know what? I think no. with Malik too, it, it wasn't just physically getting healthy too. I think mentally he's in sure. a better place. And he like and he I think he flipped the switch. Like we, you know, we watched a lot of Michigan State Spartans, a lot of Michigan State like seniors who maybe haven't had or maybe they're not at the point of the career that they want to be. And yeah. at the end of like second half of Big Ten play, they like flip that switch and they turn it on and they pick things up like the Kenny Goins of the world and you know the Matt Costellos of the world. Like they had that switch, the Aaron Henry when he dragged us to the tournament that one year. It's just like that kind of last dance feel, turn yeah. it on. And look, for everything that's been said about Malik, and it's always been a consistency and health thing with him. That's that's what it's been. He has stayed healthy this year. Mm -hmm. And in Big Ten play, he has been consistent. And that's all, honestly, that's all we can ask for. Like, we, Malik has done his part for this basketball team, especially in Big Ten play, to the point where I'm having conversations now and people are asking me, like, what's, like, what's the second team, third team, all Big Ten look like? And I'm like, you really have to take a serious look at Malik Hall because, yeah. and, and, and even outside of that zero and zero anomaly, which I still to this day can't explain, I'll never sure. be able to explain it. My future kids might look up a game log of that game. Be like, what happened with Malik Hall? I'm like, yeah. sport, I got nothing for you. I can't explain it. But what he has done outside of that has been special. He has showed up almost every single game. I think maybe one or two, a couple moments, maybe the game at Minnesota at the barn. But outside of that, he's been showing up, and that's all we wanted. Like, I think that's all Michigan State fans have wanted from Malik Hall for a long time, for him to be healthy and for him to show up consistently. And that's what he's done. And right. we needed – Every point of that 15 points in one of the one of the greatest Big Ten rock fights of the century. That and was we nasty. Every, and we yeah. needed every single rebound in the Big Ten rock fight of the century as well. So uh, credit to him. Him and him and Trey really kind of put this team on their back somewhat. I mean, Tyson was a little bit off in this game, had some plays on the stretch, right. but like just you know, a lot of uncharacteristic mislayups by this team. So yeah, they they stepped up. Tyson's recent struggles too, like have maybe even given the torch to Malik as the most consistent player this year, which if you had that prop bet before the season started at the imaginary sports book, go ahead and cash that ticket for $1 billion. But yeah, he's turned it on. He's been Malik Aaron Henry hall here down the stretch. And like, we'll close this first segment. Um, we have like that fun on this show. You know, we, we screw around all the time, but I'm going to take it down like heavy lane right now because Big Ten Network did a fantastic profile on Malik Hall. A few people know, maybe more than a handful of people knew that Malik Hall's dad has been fighting dementia. Mm. I didn't know it was for the better part of 11 years. Like he's been in assisted living for that long. If you guys haven't watched the videos, just YouTube it, go on Twitter, seek these out. Because I quite literally can't imagine what that's like seeing your parent go through that for that long. And, you know, I do go back to that Northwestern game. And his dad is an assistant living in Chicago. Mm. Northwestern play. I, I just wonder if there was anything going on with that where, hey, and he even admitted to in these uh, Big Ten Network pieces that, you know, sometimes his mind isn't even in basketball whatsoever. I can excuse the kid for that. This isn't a dad going through, like, the sniffles or something like that. Like, this is some serious, serious H S H I fill in the blank there. So again, 
senior day was laden with plenty of great stories. Malik Hall just had one of them. So I just want to throw that in at the end. Again, I'm sorry to just, you know, bring the fun to a screeching halt there and talk about the hard realities of life. But like, that is certainly part of the story. Can I, can I jump in real quick? Yeah, add, add to that it. Because I, I said this actually on uh, one, of, one of my sleepers episodes with Greg, um, because I saw a lot of things surrounded by like, uh, oh, they don't deserve to kiss the logo. Like these mm-hmm. guys don't deserve this. Like don't clap. Like things like that. And sure. You, you know, you're looking at one of the probably the more I, I I like to say it's realistic, but sometimes it comes off as negative. And yes, I am a Debbie Downer at times. I truly am. But at the end of the day, I can understand and appreciate like what those guys had to go through. Like just being a college athlete that that's got that's got to be like literally so hard. I like. Yeah. Don't even like playing this card, but like I played at a D3 school and that was strenuous at a time. And no sure. one even ca- and no one was cared about like an Albion, the Albion Brits one or not. Like that <laughs> was strenuous. So I couldn't right. imagine like what these guys are going through and they hate losing more than anybody because they got to hear it from the coach. They probably had this inner dialogue, like everything. So I think everyone should take a step back and just appreciate them being a part of the program and doing what they did outside of the success and outside of the stats. I, I know it's hard to do, but you really do need to appreciate these guys for doing what they did for four years. It's, it's, it's a sacrifice to play college yeah. sports. Like you sacrifice a lot, family, time, all types of things that you sacrifice. And you need to, you know, you need to acknowledge that. And I'm, I think people did a good, did good job of that. Like, you know, I, I heard the crowd yeah. on TV. I thought it was a pretty good reception the ceremonies afterwards look like they went well as well. So, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of echo your sentiment as well. Cause you know, I can't believe Malik is playing basketball with that going on. I couldn't, I literally could not imagine. And I want to give a nod to one of the other cool stories on senior night here in a hot second, but first, Carter, I hate to do this. I got to save to the bench. Cause I need to talk to people's ears off about eBay motors. Folks, hey, if you need some auto needs out there, eBay Motors is the place to be. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, I'll say that again, over 122 million parts, you will always find exactly what you are looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or it's your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you are burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. So what are you waiting for out there? Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to you as customers. Now let's get the iconic Carter Elliott of Spartans Illustrated and Sleepers Media back into the mix here. And yes, we're going to break this game down a little more. Okay. It it was ugly. It was an ugly win. The win is the important part. We'll talk about the ugly side here in a bit, but got to talk about the Mati Sissoko storyline here too for senior night. His brother, of course, unless you're watching the game on mute, you already know this. His brother, uh, Soleimane, has traveled from Mali. And during my lunch hour, I looked up like, what damage that is from Mahdi's village of, uh, uh, oh God, I'm going to screw this up, uh, Bafalab to Bamako, the capital where he flew out of. Carter, that's an eight, eight and a half hour car ride just on the top to get to the airport. And then you're flying. These are the flights I saw to DTW. 31 hours in the air, three connections, not the most ideal travel day. So he's going to go to the game tonight. He's going to go to New York City for a quick visit. Then he's going to come back to East Lansing and then go to Minneapolis for the Big Ten tournament and then go over to Provo, Utah to see Madi's host family. They got this guy touring like he's Taylor Swift out there. It's insane. It, personally, me, if I flew all the way from Mali to Michigan, I don't even want to look at an airplane for the next week, but they have this guy traversing the continental United States. But anyway, I just want to shout this out because they still have the GoFundMe up there for the Mighty Sissoko Foundation. Uh, we included it in the bio of this video and this podcast episode. So if if you want to give to the Mighty Sissoko Foundation, go ahead, give it to him there. It's going to go towards great things going on over in Mali. So just want to throw that out there before we get into the ugly side of that. Carter, do you want anything to add on that or do you just want to 
talk talk ball. What happened? Yeah, uh, uh, you know, I, I think I think I think I'm t- I think I'm ready to get to the ball portion. Of this. Okay, did that concern you? Did that, did any of that concern you? Because I know that hey, you know, Saturday was as fun as a six point loss could be. Um, I know the computers love us. We're still 20th in Kempom despite this three game losing streak we were on. And yeah, hey, you know what? This team can turn the Jets on in March. It's Michigan State, baby. But uh, w- uh hmm, hmm. When I wake up tomorrow morning, uh, I think the luster of this wind is maybe going to just leave a little bit. And I'm going to ask myself, uh, can we talk ourselves into a march run here? Uh, okay, <laughs> let, 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 me, let me attempt to talk you into a march run here because yeah, I, I, I got talked into this as well. And okay. it, it's, it's, it is fairly, it's fairly simple. It's Tyson Walker and Malik Hall. Let's just eggs in on that basket. Yeah. Tyson Walker by himself. If you do whatever you got to do to get him healthy, obviously I, I I can. Tyson is too good of a player, and we've seen what he looks like when he's healthy. We know that groin is bothering him. Obviously, right? Uh, Izzo's been giving him days off of practice. I've never heard of Tom Izzo giving players <laughs> days off of practice Correct. ever. They will come in with double booted on, and they will still <laughs> get like some three man weave or some shell drills going on. So the fact that he's giving days off shows how banged up he is, but. We have seen what Tyson can do by himself, like taking over games. And you you pair that with a consistent Malik Hall, that that might be good enough to make a March run. But that's that's a lot of projecting. Yeah. But the thing is, in reality, with this team is that I mean, eleven percent from three in this game. Um, Jay Nakins has not hit a shot since I I can't remember when. He's really struggling. Um, I have a stat really quick. I'm just gonna cut you off right now. Yeah. At- since halftime of the Penn State game, four of twenty-two from three-point land. Just want to throw that one out there really quick. I'm sorry, just go. go it's go just on I, he's just way too good of a shooter for that. He's way he is way too good of a player and a shooter to 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 shoot like that. And, and you know who knows what it is. He's probably in his own head about it. I sure. I would be if I was shooting that bad. Like I don't blame him for that. Yeah. Um, but I you know I I think that he himself needs to do some soul searching and maybe the staff pulls the right buttons to like get him kind of unlocked and get him off the schneid. But we need him to knock down shots. Um, we're a team that doesn't have just a plethora of shooters left and right. So if one of our best shooters isn't hitting shots and then Tyson's not sh- hitting shots as well, there's nowhere else to go to look at yeah. it an outside shot. So. We really rely on those two guys. Um, so in order to make a run, we are going to need some guys to knock down shots. And look, you know, not to be the downer of the situation, but this this Northwestern team is one of the more banged up teams in the country. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Lang- Langbor-, Langbor was not healthy in that game. He had one good ankle. Uh, he gave it a go. Credit to him. Yeah. Uh, Nicholson is not a barn burner by any means, but they don't have the big man depth at all. Unger picked up two quick fouls, so they were down to like their third big man. And – Ty Berry is one of the more underrated shooting guards in the country, in my yeah. opinion, even in the Big Ten in general. So, you know, the the, the chips were stacked against them, and there's I, I can't get past the fact that Northwestern shouldn't have been in that basketball game. We should have ran them off the court Yeah, if, if we're yeah. good. If we're good, we run them off the court, and we didn't, so I don't know what that makes us. <laughs> It was nice to see Michigan State's defense still locked down, even though their shots weren't falling. Because at times we've seen, not just with Michigan State, you see this all the time in basketball. If it's not working on offense, the, the defense shows some cracks. Now, granted, again, just like you were saying, that was a short Northwestern team. You hope you'd play good defense against them. They were starting mm-hmm. frat brothers out <laughs> there. And at the end of the game, I'm texting my dad, I'm texting my brother, being like, hey, you know what? If you could win a game with your point guard that's starting, once again, not having a full game, and I know it's going to make the A.J. Hogard fans out there disgusted that I say that he didn't play a full great game, and I'm sorry I expect that from a senior point guard. Anyway, you didn't get a full good game out of him. You have Jaden Akins, who's been a zero the last few games. You have Tyson Walker, who just has one game in his last six, shooting above 40%. That's not a blip. That's a trend at this point. And you don't have anything from your center position. Hey, if you could win like that, that's good. Then after I hit send on that text, I was thinking like, um, hey, Matt, it's also March 6th, and a lot of these have been consistent problems throughout the year. <laughs> um, this isn't one of these cute, like, hey, you want a scrappy game. Like, no, there, there might actually be some concern finally here, and I'm uh, waking up to that. Like, yeah, I mean, you, you, yeah. You, you love defense. You do. Like, the, yeah, I, I, agree. I, I agree. The defense is great, but yeah. at the end of the day – Last time I checked, like when this when the person working the scoreboard is 
is putting up points on the board, it's not because they got to stop. It's because you put the orange thing and the 10 foot thing and we have <laughs> trouble with that right now. And that's like, yeah. it, I, it's just, it's, I hate to put this in the air, but I promise you, Matt, it's going to break my fragile heart when mm-hmm. we lose a game in the tournament, 58 to 52, I'm going <laughs> to lose it. I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose it. It's going to be painful. And we said, and, and we've seen it already. Like Dale Bonner hits, hit 60 and beat us at home. Like that's, yeah. that happens. So it's just, uh, I just, I'm just really hoping and banking on Tyson finding some type of rhythm and healthy and just healthy, just burst to kind of pick things up. Here's I'll end the segment on this one Uh, on Wednesday, March 6th. uh, Carter, is it time to burn Garrett Norman's red shirt? Do do we just, you know, unleash the Kraken right now? I'm kidding in case anyone couldn't catch on that. Like, obviously that'd be a ridiculous idea, but are are you, are you kidding? (laughs) You know what? I say when the words left my mouth, usually I regret when words leave my mouth and their thoughts, but I say I just convinced myself in that one. But folks, uh, we will be back. We're going to talk about obviously this game, this tournament. We're going to do a little bit of this or that with our guy Carter Alley. But first, need to talk your ear off about that is right. Fire TV, new friend of the program. Folks, Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick. It just gets so easy with it. You just plug it into your existing TV and it provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend of baseball or the college basketball tournament coming up, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free and that includes all of us at locked on and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well fire tv channels lets you dive into all the in-game analysis highlights and more to keep up to date with the latest in the world of sports march madness nba mlb and tons more not to mention great news entertainment gaming travel and cooking videos as well check out fire tv channels on fire tv and alexa devices if you haven't checked out fire TV channels? Well, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. Now let's bring the one, the only Carter Elliott of Sleepers Media and Sparts Illustrated back into the mix here. And uh, Carter, we're going to get hit with a shot collar here uh, as, you know, content creators for Michigan State. If we don't bring up Xavier Booker's name, my God, we've made it 22 minutes into this video and we have yet to bring up Xavier Booker's name. Um, I knew that his night was done when he gave up that rebound with roughly 11 minutes to go. Uh, Whether that's right or wrong, I guess that's for us to debate. Um, Look, I thought this was going to be a great matchup for Xavier Booker or Jackson Kohler, perhaps. (laughs) I guess. Like, what are your thoughts on just like his night, how he was used? Is it worth something getting upset over even after a win? Or are you just so beaten down from the discourse of Xavier Booker that, it's not even bothering you a little bit. Hey, I, th- I think this is the thing that bothers me. Um, and I'm sorry if I'm not related to anybody, but I'll say this another way. There's a meme out there, right? And it's mm-hmm. two people talking to human resources. And one yes. person looks at human resources and they're like, oh, like, oh, he's so precious. He's so cute. Like, da, da, da. And it's a picture of somebody else talking to human resources. Like, oh, oh no, get him out of here. Like, get him out. Like, yeah. I feel like that's Booker. And everyone else just has like this leash that they can just they yes. can go out there and play freely. Do right. whatever. Uh, they can blow a box out. It's okay. Hey, yep. get back out there. Give it a go. <laughs> Xavier Booker blows a box out. Get, go go get him. Cohen Carr blows, blows a box out. Go get him. I mean, I, I just it's, – it's things like that just, just kind of confuse me because, like, I, I thought that Cohen Carr had, like, that hustle moment where he saved the ball out of bounds. And I'm, like, looking at that, I'm just like, hmm, yeah. that seems like a moment you built. Like, you earn, you earn some more minutes. That's a great hustle. You did some great things right there. Xavier Booker would have been a great game. They were going small. He spaced the floor. He would have gave the guards, I think, more of a chance to either miss a layup or make a layup. Who really knows how they were playing? But it would have gave a little bit more spacing. I was just, I was just very surprised to see him not get more minutes in this game. To be honest with you, because I, I, I just think that what we've seen in the last game and with you know the quote unquote right matchup that coaches all likes to find, I thought this was the perfect matchup for him. It seemed up and down like a match made in heaven. Again, yeah. Northwestern, frat brothers in their starting lineup. Their, their only competent center 
is sitting on the bench in a sweatsuit. Like that, it, it's time to unleash him, man. Or, right. I mean, I, I, it's just I, the the overcomplicating of things. Is, I think what confuses me. Like I'm looking at it, and it's yeah. this is not how it works out. I know it isn't, and people can yell at me all they want because I know it's not how it works out. I'm looking at this. I'm like, man, we could use some offense. Let me let me look let me look at my bench here. Okay, I need offense. Right. I need I need a big that can provide offense. Um, mm-hmm. No, not you, Xavier. Um, it's got to yeah. be somebody else. Nick, oh, okay. Nick, no, are you down there? <laughs> yeah, like it's just it's just it's just crazy to me. I I don't know. Okay, so now after this game, it depends on what bracketology you look at. Some are very you know. Uh, Confident that this game will get Michigan State in the tournament. All right. The bracketologist that I talk to all the time, he runs 1 3 run sports. He says to feel comfortable on Selection Sunday, you needed two wins. This is win number one, then Indiana, and then whoever you're going to play first in the Big Ten tournament. Sure, whatever. He, here's where we're going to get nutty here, Carter. I don't know if there's a gas leak going on in my studio right now, but like I'm going to uncork a take that just might sound ludicrous, insane. Do we? Do, do we lose the next two games on purpose to try to get that 11 seed in March Madness? Because I have no interest in winning our way up to a nine seed or an eight seed and facing a one seed in the second round. I know that is loser talk. Guess what, Carter? I'm a loser. So I'm comfortable <laughs> talking like this. This ain't no problem for me over here. So the path to a March run is substantially easier as an 11 seed. I don't care if you have to play a game in Dayton to warm up first. Am I do I do I need to get my head checked? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, your your thought process is completely right. I, Thank you. I, I want nothing to do with that eight nine line. I mean, absolutely nothing. And I don't know how it would fall out, but I'm just I'll give you a little little insight here to the mm-hmm. last bracket matches I looked at. Oh, well, actually, this is kind of bad for Michigan State, but like Wisconsin was a six seed. Yeah, that's got to be the least scariest six seed I've seen in a long, long. There's a lot of eleven seeds that are looking at that. Like we get to play Wisconsin. Yay. Can't wait for that. Now, that doesn't work out for Michigan State. We saw how that unfolded. But you you just you want to do everything you can to avoid that eight nine line. And now that we put ourselves in this position, if we win two games, we probably are going to be on the eight nine line. Mm -hmm. That and that's that's very tough. I know. So here's the this or that question. This is so stupid. This is going to sound ridiculous to leave my mouth. <laughs> Whatever. You know what? We're how, how far into this? 27 minutes. No one listens this long of the episode anyway. No, no one's going to hear this. Uh, would you rather go into Selection Sunday with Michigan State as an 85% lock to make the tournament, but it would be in Dayton as the 11th seed, or guaranteed to be in the tournament, but it's as a 9 or an 8 seed? What, what would you rather take? 85. God, 85, 85% Dayton. I think I'm with you. <laughs> that sounds so. That sounds so silly. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. There we go. And I know full well, like if we lose on Sunday against Indiana, like I, I, I'll be upset. I'm not gonna lie and say like, no, I'll be thrilled if they lose. Like I, no, I know myself well enough to know that I am delusional and irrational. And even though the words are leaving my mouth right now, that hey, maybe a loss on Sunday wouldn't be the worst thing if we're talking about a long run here in March. But like. I, like it, it sounds, it sounds nice, Carter. Like, it's it's a nice great. sunny day, a nice sunny Tuesday in Dayton to get the tournament started. Why not? Whatever, they great, great, great place. And despite what Michigan fans say, that they want to pout and scream, or hey, Illinois fans, rival fans of Michigan State, the first four are still making the tournament. Uh, oh, I, oh. I, I know it hurts to hear for some fan bases, but like the streak goes on, and the streak is important to me. It's important to Tom. This was important to a lot of fans out there. But yeah, that's that's kind of where I wanted to kind of end on just lunacy talk but is it really that crazy it, it's not that crazy and i also last thing i want to say yeah. i don't care what's going on with indiana assembly hall is the devil horrible it, it's, it's horrible the, it is it is there is some voodoo magic about assembly hall in the past there were things done by players or coaches there some type of sacrifices i got some theories rolling that will roll on another episode but that place when you walk in there you get a chill up your spine Mm-hmm. And I don't care how bad that team is and how they're kind of reeling. I am I am so afraid to go to Assembly Hall on senior day, I might add, because, you know, some seniors really show up for their senior days. Crazy concept. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a real thing, and that's scary to me. I, just the words, senior day at Assembly Hall. Like, I, I don't care if they're throwing five guys that look like me out there. Like, I, that's a – that's a scheduled loss. That would be a massively impressive win on Sunday. I, I, and I know that sounds, again, we're doing silly talk here the last five minutes. I know that sounds silly that a win over this Indiana team would be a really good win, but, I mean, just all the intangibles around the game. Mm. 
it would it would be a nice game. It would yeah, be a nice uh, game 100%. to win. But if you lose, hey, you know what? We're sleeping easy on Sunday, no matter what. Well, we'll see. Are, see you in Min- the- see you in Minnesota as we battle it out on the very first game at 12 p.m. against uh, who knows? I don't know. Spartans 55, Maryland Terrapins 57. That's what's going to be. Uh... No, 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 no. No, we're going to get out of this episode with high vibes. V- vibes are somewhat, somewhat back. Somewhat. Back. I can. I'm so relieved. I'm just relieved after this game, man. Not, not, not to bring a full circle, but just to talk about what we started the show on. This was the kind of game where if I thought about it, like during the day, like th- there was like that jolt, like in the diaphragm area of my torso that just like shot through me. That only comes during March in the basketball season. Like it's 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 here, Carter, and it's here. scary, but it's here. Yeah. And, and, but uh, we're we're gonna be here. We're ready for, for what. Bring it on. Keep keep on keep on beating us if you have to. We'll we'll be. <laughs> We will. Carter, this is always a hoot and a half. I know the people love whenever you jump on here. I love it even more. It's always great talking to you, my man. Uh, anything you want to shout out here before we let you go and enjoy the rest of your Victory Wednesday here, Carter? Uh, you know what? There, There's certain – I'll end on this high note. There's certain teams yeah. out there that they woke up today and they lost the basketball game. There's fans out there that lost the basketball game today. I don't mean to throw people under the bus, but Vanderbilt basketball fans, they lost today. <laughs> You're a winner, Sheehan. Hey, I'm hey, I'm a winner too. Okay, and we can oh. sleep tonight as winners. That's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. That's wow. All right, gang. Well, hey, until next time, <laughs> we're gonna chop it up. With Locked on Hoosiers. We're gonna talk about not just the basketball game coming up this weekend, also what's going on with their football program because, well, just like us, they have some changes too, and we face each other later this year. But until then, enjoy the rest of your night, your morning, your day, your week. Love you all. Go green. Bye.